my dear viewers fd r8000 front derailleur from shimano you cannot forget about this plate if you have the brace on front derailleur if you have the clamp on version you're not going to be using this one if you have the adapter from clamp on to brace on most likely if not 100 percent of you will use this little plate uh, it's all linked to some improvements of this uh, model which work greatly but you have to know about this of course first you need to remove this little plate here this cap Alrighty, I have disassembled the front derailleur. Here, in the body of the front derailleur, we have a hole in which you can find the bolt for 2 mm Allen key. And the bolts goes through the whole body and it goes out right here, it protrudes here. And this is the stabilizing bolt because the bolt, the mountain bolt, goes through the hanger here and it will, it will go right here but the other contact point with the frame will make the derailleur, it really makes the derailleur much more stable, you can feel it works uh, better and so you don't want this bolt to touch against your carbon frame, alloy frame, any frame that's why you're using this plate. When you buy the derailleur, you should get two plates. This one is bent and the other one will be straight uh, or flat. Uh, and you're gonna use either of those depending on what's the, the shaping of your frame. Sometimes this bolt will go out, protrudes against the hanger itself. And so you won't have to use the plate in my case this bolt will touch i think somewhere here or here and so i'm not using the plate but you should know the plate exists and what is it for before we start you just want to assemble this uh, front derailleur so so tightening the bolt just a little bit and then using the limiting screw the left one or the rear one there are two here this one and this one uh, by um, screwing it in so clockwise so that the outer plate of our front derailleur will be parallel or just just in line align with the largest chain ring it will make all the other adjustments so much easier once you know that step one distance between the front derailleur plate and the teeth of the uh, chain ring meaning how high the derailleur should be uh, don't remove the sticker before you do it because this sticker indicates very nicely how it should be the distance should be between one and three millimeters and you can also see here the shaping of the teeth on the sticker so exactly how it's shown here and now we can just a little bit tighten this bolt step number two we've got the height now we need the right angle if you are using the same type of the front derailleur as I do, which is the brazon, not the clamp-on, the brazon, you have this, this stabilizing uh, bolt. Unscrew this one because it will limit possibility of, uh, of uh, movement here. Uh, and in this case, in this type of the front derailleur, you want to have your plate not parallel to the chain ring, but going about half a millimeter up to one millimeter inwards because then when we stabilize the derailleur with this bolt here it will push it a little bit back so we will have some tension between two bolts here that's what we, what we want to have then the, the front mag will be really stiff will be very stable so we need to unscrew this one first Remember, clamp on, parallel, uh, brace on, a little bit inwards. At the same time, just check whether the height of your front derailleur did, didn't change. Maybe you push it a little bit uh, downwards, so check both the angle and the height.
Now we will see how it really works for stabili stabilizing the front mag. This is how it bends on, a, on this hanger. And now see how it changes. The difference is noticeable here. Okay, this is difficult one. Sorry, I heard the light in my mouth. This rod here doesn't go against the frame. That's why I don't need to use additional plate. We've got the right height and the right angle of the front mag. It is assembled now, fastened. Now it's time to guide the cable. That's the step number three. And the first thing we do is to guide it through this little guide here. On the bikes with internal cable routing, you might have just naked cable as I do. On others, there will be housing going through this guide because it is uh, compatible both with just naked cables or for the, for the housing as a cable stop. And this is the first place your cable should go right here this is how it all looks like and this is the bolt the mounting bolt there is no groove right here but this little end should go against this place here so we have the guide or cable stop right here then we've got this groove and then it will go like this. This is perfectly normal that this part of the derailleur works like this. Then you just want to wrap the cable around your palm just a little bit so that you can pull nicely and have no slack on the on the cable. It should have some tension on it and it will go around here and under but now we can assemble this bolt. Now the step number four. As you can see, I have the wheel assembled. You don't really need it at this point, but very soon we're gonna need the wheel here. In the step number four, we need to shift up to the highest gear and the largest uh, 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 chain ring here, like this, and trim down. Okay, not shift down, but go up and trim. Here's how it looks like on the shifter side. Shift up and trim. So just push a little, because if you did this, that would be shift back down. We wanna shift up and trim. Okay guys, making sure it's up and trimmed. And now this little feature is nice. These two lines should be aligned. So it should be one nice line. Now we're gonna use this uh, little adjuster. This is the cable tension adjuster. Here we have two limiting screws. There inside, there is this stabilizing screw and this is cable adjuster. I'm gonna be threading this one in until those two will make nice one line. Can you see the difference? Now it's in line, perfect. Now we have the limiting screws left for the adjustments. So we don't want the chain wrap against our plates of the front derailleur uh, on the highest and lowest gear. And here's how we do it. Shift up to the largest sprocket chain ring at the front and the largest one at the rear. Now do the trimming and check whether the chain isn't rubbing against the outer plate of the front rail. Now you don't see the line exactly because I cannot go with the camera that deep. Uh, but when I uh, tighten this bolt, the right one, uh, then the plate will go outwards. When I go counterclockwise it will go inwards and now you can see it sits on the chain you can see the chain moving so I want to have about half millimeters distance between the chain and the inner 
surface of the outer plate, like this. I found the right perspective for you guys. Okay, clockwise, counterclockwise. Now I'm going to shift down the cassette and up the front, front derailleur and see how it works. I might tweak this one just a bit like this. Now, small chain ring at the front and the big one, the rear. We've got rubbing here. So I go counterclockwise with the left limiting screw. Now we just need to guide the cable. It's even here on the, shown here on the sticker, It's it goes down here, around it, like this, should be hidden here, like that, and then this little cup will help us. So it will be like this, and we need to thread it through. And this is also one of the crucial moments on the biggest chain ring. It goes up and shows the bottom. You can see the groove here. So the cable should go, it should be a little bit more tightened around here. Go through this groove. Okay, can you see the difference now? Now it goes nicely here and won't be on the way of the front Mac working. And finally, done and working. My friends, if you find these tutorials helpful and you would like to make also some suggestions on what to service in the near future, please join my six patrons so that we can talk about it, buy stuff, test it, review and do the servicing tutorials. Bye bye.